Federal government resumes trial of Boko Haram suspects. And withdrawal limits will cripple campaign funding, parties members cry out. This is Plus Politics, and my name is Nyam Gul Agaji. Thanks for joining us. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, on Monday said the federal government will resume the mass pros prosecution of Boko Haram suspects being held in selected military formations in Nigeria. It was reported that a similar exercise has been conducted some years ago when such trials was conducted in military facilities and in Niger, or Niger rather, and Bornu states. According to him, President Mohamed Buhari has approved funds for the exercise. And uh, we're joined to discuss this by Deji Awobiide, a legal practitioner. <laughs> Welcome, Deji, to the program. Uh, thank you for having me. Okay, um, we've heard this story about uh, the Boko Haram suspects that are going to be prosecuted again by the federal government. And we've been told that the federal government has re released money. The president actually has released money for the prosecution of the Boko Haram suspects, many of them that are in the custody somewhere in military formations. How much faith do you have in this statement by the attorney general that they are going to actually pull it off finally? <coughs> Well, it's interesting that the Attorney General has chosen this time, um, a few months to their departure from uh, the arms of power, to begin the trial of this suspect. However, well, the position is very clear that when you have anybody who is alleged to have committed a crime, you should prosecute them timelessly. So, uh, for me, coming from the answer, it's important for the government to prosecute those detained Boko Haram suspects as soon as uh, the proof of evidence was available, instead of keeping them and determining at what pace uh, they intend to go and when and uh, choose at what point they would prosecute them. So now that they've decided to prosecute, I believe that I will come out openly to make that statement, then I believe that they should see it through and give the, uh, the suspects a uh, fair trial. Um, whether or not the um, military formation or, or military uh, camps will be the right place to have the trial is another question that we can come to later. But uh, for now, I think we welcome the development that finally those um, persons who have been accused of uh, uh, being Boko Haram members or, or being Boko Haram sponsors will get their day uh, uh, before a tribunal or before a court for a trial. Uh, but the, the word soon by the federal government seems to have a different definition all the time because they, we have been told a long time ago that the federal government will soon name sponsors of Boko Haram. They will soon name people who are chieftains in those groups, those bandits and all that. And the soon has never come to pass till this moment. How sure are you that this soon is going to be really as everyone else in the world defines the word? Honestly, when it comes to the Nigerian government and their use of word and language, particularly the word soon, um, I think I speak for almost every Nigerian that we really cannot please this government in terms of where and... So we really can't please this government in terms of uh, what they want to do and whether they will do what they say they will do. Mm. But you know, we'll take what they have said with a pinch of salt. Um, in terms of yes, they said they will soon start it, but I will not go. To, I will not. I will not close my eyes and uh, believe wholeheartedly that this government will follow through what they have said. However, uh, the AGF, with the Assembly of Nigeria, knows very well that when you have suspects who have been detained, you need to give them a trial. But there's so much secrecy concerning this Boko Haram issue. Um, secrecy, as you've mentioned, in terms of sponsorship, secrecy in terms of who and who have been arrested and apprehended. We don't really know the names of these suspects. We don't know whether this person will be given a fair trial, whether they've been allowed access to their counsel, whether or not the allegations that they've been confronted with have really been made available to them. Is there a proof of evidence available to them to know exactly what the offenses are? You know, sometimes, you know, with our government, with our agencies, security agencies, 
There are times where innocent member people are also taken along with those who are suspected of, of committing these crimes. So we really cannot say that everybody who has been apprehended or rounded up as suspects is indeed a suspect in terms of the commission of the offence. But we can only keep faith with this, with, with, with the government, hoping that they've turned a new leaf and hoping that haven't said what they've said, that they would see it through. But like I said, I wouldn't hold my breath believing um, everything that this government has said because in the past seven years, they've shown that um, whatever policy that they intend to follow through on, they've always had one snag or the other. So let's just hope, I mean, just keep hope alive that these suspects will get um, their trial at that when do you? Okay, but even if the government decides to do this, uh, they have the willpower to prosecute this, do you think the justice system, the Nigerian justice system, can handle this? Well, in terms of personnel, I believe we have the brightest legal minds in Africa, even in the world. That a lot of our judges are well traveled, they are well schooled, well educated. So, in terms of the quality of personnel, we have one of the, the best uh, array of judges you can find anywhere in the world. However, when it comes to infrastructure, in terms of okay, uh, we seem to be losing your audio, uh, DG. We hope that whatever adjustments need to be done should be done now. Oh, okay. I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I can hear you now. Yes, I was saying. So I was saying about the person finds who can to this trial and give us the very best of legal. But in terms of the structural facilities available to them. Uh, I think that the government needs to do more. And then the, the, the case dockets of the judges is, is quite enormous. So adding um, maybe trial of 1,000 suspects or more um, would burden the judicial system, particularly that we have elections coming and we have pre-election matters ongoing in our courts. So as it, uh, as it were, um, we would need to have more judges um, employed by the judiciary. The NGC needs to look into this have more judges employed by the judiciary so that we can have maybe specialized courts or, uh, to attend to these trials as opposed to having the same judges who attend to civil matters, attend to criminal matters, and thereby overburdening um, the justice system. That, for me, I think is the only <laughs> Okay. Um, I, well, uh, we've been talking with uh, Deji Awobi Day, and uh, we'll just take a short break and we'll return to uh, Deji to continue this discussion. Stay with us. You're welcome back. It's still Plus Politics on. Uh, Plus TV Africa, and we're talking with Deji Awobiide, and we're looking at what the Attorney General of the Federation has said, that soon Boko Haram suspects that are in custody already will be prosecuted by the federal government, and money has been released uh, to that effect by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And we were just asking, what do you, what is your fit in the... Um, the justice system like and Deji was trying to give answers to that before we went on that short break so Deji you might want to continue with your train of thoughts uh, what how do you believe how much do you believe in the justice system to be able to pull that off and prosecute whoever they would need to prosecute and do what they need to do yes uh, thank you for the question um, I believe that in terms of personnel we have the very best of legal minds on the bench and the bar to attend to this um, trial. What, where I think that we might have a little challenge is in the area of facilities that will be available for this trial. You know, in terms of the structures that are available, the assistance that are required to enable the speedy dispensation of justice in these matters is where I have cause for concern. But in terms of the personnel, 
I believe that we have the best legal minds to effectively ensure that the fair trial to this uh, given to these suspects. Now that the government has given um, uh, its full backing in terms of saying money has been released, I would believe that saying money has been released means that there's no financial muscle um, to back this trial from beginning to conclusion. And I believe that if we go along with the government's plan um, to have their day in court. And of course, I believe that where they don't have counsel of their choice, it's counsel to defend the suspect. So any person who's been detained who does not have access to counsel would have a pro bono counsel made available by either the Legal Aid Council of Nigeria or by the uh, Ministry of Justice to defend the suspects to ensure that there is balance on both sides and that there is a fair trial at the end of the day. You did allude to the fact that um, the time frame is very short, and I am also concerned about that, that if this were to be done by the federal government, uh, is the time frame good enough? We know that the Chief Justice has said that uh, more judges need to be appointed, just like you pointed out yourself, that more judges need to be appointed, and maybe some other people within these uh, numbers that uh, have been arrested and put in detention, they may not have the legal counsel to back them up and they might need the services of councils that will do pro bono or councils of government that will stand for them. And this manpower is not there. So this, this time frame, do you think it's enough or in your suggestion they might need to just extend it? Well, I believe the time frame between now and when this government departs is, is short. But the good thing is that the government is a continuum. So it means that even if this government departs... Okay, we'll encourage you, um, if you're watching this program right now, to also join the conversation on our social media platforms, all our social media platforms at Plus TV Africa. Maybe you have a question or a comment to make, and you might just want to do that. Plus TV Africa, whether on Twitter or on Instagram, just look for us and send that question for us. You might just want to add the hashtag um, Plus Politics. Deji, are you back there? Yes, I'm, I'm back. I, okay, don't know what, I don't know what happened. Just I'm round back. off what uh, you were saying about uh, the time frame. Yes, yeah, so I was, I was saying that as, as it relates to the time frame, I, um, government is a continuum. So what it means is that if the new government comes in come May 29, that government will continue um, um, with the trial of the suspects. For me, what's important is that the trial of the suspects is set to begin and these suspects will have their day in court. And uh, um, that, for me, is, uh, is, is good for our legal system. That persons are not just detained at the instance of the government on end, uh, for, for periods on ending. Rather, you give them opportunity to defend themselves. And, of course, if those of them are found guilty, will be sentenced to um, whatever term of imprisonment or whatever penalties that the, the courts would impose. Those who are found innocent will be acquitted of the charges and be able to resume their normal lives back. So for me, it's important that we begin this trial of the suspects so that everybody involved can see that justice is not only done, but it seems to be done. Okay, but a lot of people have used this to measure uh, the, the level of commitment to insecurity, the fight against insecurity by this present administration, that have been very secretive about uh, the prosecution of this Boko Haram, the naming of the Boko Haram suspects and the sponsors and all those things surrounding this Boko Haram. If these people are tried the way they say they will be tried and the guilty ones, some people have, had, have said that they should pay even with a capital price for their action while some others are advocating amnesty. What would you, uh, what part of the divide would you stand? Well, I, I'm a part of amnesty deals for um, convicted criminals so if you if either a trial and the person is found guilty of the offense i do not see the reason why you will be granting them amnesty you should allow them um, um serve their term and then if on, on good behavior you find that they are remorseful or they've turned a new leaf you can then go ahead and grant a pardon the question provides for how to grant a pardon to suspects, uh, to convicted criminals. Now, for those who 
who, who are on the other side of the divide who believe in this amnesty deal for these people, but largely because of the crime that has been committed. I mean, people have been killed, children, women, adults, uh, including men and women, you know, have been killed and lost their lives. So families have been, have, have also dealt with the trauma of losing loved ones, only for um, a government to now say um, it, it, it wants to pardon uh, persons who have committed these grievous crimes. Um, honestly, it doesn't sound good to the ears that uh, such persons are pardoned. But what it does is also it encourages other criminals to go along this route, knowing that at some point in time, they will be pardoned. And you will believe that's why there was the outcry when the governor, when, when the president pardoned the um, um, convicted ex-governors who were found guilty of corruption. So if you have that kind of outcry for convicted uh, um, uh, politicians uh, who are found guilty of corruption, how much more for persons who took life of others, who caused so much pain to others, other families, other people of uh, particular territories. So amnesty for me is off the table and should be off the table. What we should be talking about is ensuring that people get justice, justice to the victims as well, the victims of the crime, the persons who have suffered on account of this um, uh, of the conduct of these criminals should also be seen to have some form of uh, closure, some form some of solace in the justice system that such persons who have committed those perpetrators crimes against their families have also been dealt with. So for me, I believe this trial should begin. And um, the secrecy, of course, is not unconnected with the fact that um, if the names of these sponsors get out, uh, or the names of this program members get out, it may affect the work of the security service in tracking maybe f financiers or sponsors or other persons involved. So maybe that's why we can we can create an argument for them um, that that making them very secret. Uh, uh, but notwithstanding the secrecy involved, as long as justice is done, a fair hearing is given to the um, suspects themselves. They have counsel of their choice who's defending them. And everything is done by the book, uh, by due process. There would not be any reason for us to, to worry. But where there's any some secrecy and they don't have access to counsel, that's where I believe I believe that we should all be concerned, so that we don't have a kangaroo trial where we just convict people um, for offences which have not been substantiated uh, for, for no reason. So it's important that on all on all sides, on the part of the government, on the part of the, the suspect themselves. Everybody is giving is seen to be uh, engaging in a fair trial for all concerned. Okay, um, just a final one. Um, in so many cases, we've seen governments come, no matter how lofty a program is, they abandon it and move on to something else. And this may also be another case where uh, a new government comes in and this prosecution, this fight that this present government might start now will be abandoned and we will not hear anything about it. Is there any legal way that this thing, uh, we can guard against it that, okay, let's make sure that the next government that comes continues with what we have begun here. Is there any way of legally making sure that the next government continues with this prosecution and everything that needs to be done to these cases? Well, the Attorney General of the Federation um, has the powers to enter a non prosecute. In other words, to choose not to pursue the prosecution of these persons any further. That power is constitutional, is provided in the constitution, therefore is a power is a power, power for him to exercise. Well, whether or not the next government will want to continue with it is left to be seen. I'm not sure that there's anything that we can do about insisting on them on the next government continuing with it. Because once the AGF enters the only prosecute, uh, it's his discretion to enter and um, there's no way we can fetter that discretion. However, there can be some public pressure that can be applied. If there's public outcry, if there's some public pressure applied towards um, the exercise of that power, then, then we might see some hesitancy on the part of the new government in just discontinuing the prosecution of these suspects. However, um, we want to believe that this, whoever emerges, would not have um, that as the first duty to go ahead and discontinue uh, prosecution of these suspects because, I mean, it sends a very bad message across 
to everybody involved, even to Nigerians, that the government is not ready to be tough on, uh, on criminals and on crime in general. So I want to believe that wherever the government comes in, whoever emerges as president eventually, um, would at least, for the purpose of um, a cosmetic application, pursue this, these trials up onto a point, maybe after a few convictions, after a few um, years have gone by, maybe they may decide to discontinue the prosecution of all of this, or, or most of them. But I will not stick up my neck to say that this, the next government will not do so, because the power of the Attorney General of the Federation, as well as the Attorney General of the State, is well provided for to enter and nolly prosecute. So if they decide, should they decide not to enter, uh, not to go further with the prosecution of the suspects, uh, we can't do anything about it. The best we can do is to uh, mount public pressure and, uh, uh, and then see whether the public outcry can weigh on the mind of the government. Okay, what a good way to uh, round, wrap up this uh, segment of the program. Public outcry, that means the people will have to sit up if they, they find anything the next government is not doing right and they have to cry out uh, through the legal means that are available to the people to do that. And possibly, like you said, we hope that the next government will listen. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Deji Awobiyide, uh, for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, that was Mr. Deji Awobiyide, a legal practitioner, and he was talking about uh, what the Attorney General of the Federation said, that the prosecution of the Boko Haram suspects now in custody will soon begin, and money has been released for that. Before we go to the next topic, let's just take a very short break and when we return, we'll be discussing the cash withdrawal policy by the central bank and the claims that it will cripple campaign funding ahead of the elections. Stay with us.